Today I'm going to talk to you about a quarter of a billion pound plant which is local to me that basically has never worked. It's a gasification plant. So what gasification is, is basically, I'll talk to you a little bit more about it. You heat material up from the bottom and you don't have too much oxygen in there and it just self combusts and then splits into the different elements and you end up with a gas from it and they can use the gas to produce electric like that, different things. But just want to talk to you about, again, the insurance company down in the corner there. They'll do you a good deal. People who watch my YouTube channel, I've spent a while setting a deal up. So anybody who mentions my name to them will get a discount. So I'll give them a ring, C and C. So I've got the footage of the gasification plant being built from the get-go. It's been there quite a few years and basically it has never worked. So what I wanted to look at in this video is I was really interested in not only the actual plant itself, why it's not worked and everything else is what is gasification. So I thought I'd do a video on it and then you guys can learn what how these plants work and different stuff. And I've actually sort of like with a bit of research over 24 hours, I've I learnt the difference between these plants and why if you've got a local incinerator and it does work or you've got one that doesn't, I basically have got a good idea why that is now. So let's go over to the video of this place being built. So this plant was basically an idea in 2010. I'm just taking this information from the internet. And the work started in, I think it was 2015, 16, somewhere there, the back end of um, 2015. Estimated time for this plant to be started and finished was about a year, maybe just, just a little bit longer than a year. This project brought a lot of money to the town. Obviously, you can imagine there would be hundreds of workers on this job. And the total bill for this plant to be built was, I think it was running into a quarter of a billion pound. State of the art, it had shredders on site, it had a way to clean the waste up, de remove the stones before the shredding process. It was a really, really clever piece of kit. Massive site. And doing a lot of reading, it's quite difficult to find out where the money actually came from. But what I did find is, is it says that the Energy Works Hull facility is the first waste project to be funded under the government's contract for difference scheme, which has been put into place to stimulate investment in green energy developments and achieve targets for carbon reduction. So I presume there'll be some sort of funding or some tax breaks from the government to get this place going. And then as you can see, this is a drone footage of the plant fully working all lit up and looking fancy smancy so this is you know a couple of years later after the plants sort of like had a steady decline not really worked and luckily one of my friends has given me a drone so this is only just literally from a couple of days ago and i thought i'd go down and have a fly over i'm not the best drone pilot that is for sure as you can tell but you know, all the machinery is gone from the front. They used to be loading shovels and stuff like that outside because I've driven past this plant many times and everything seems to be completely removed from the site. This plant was full of controversy, you know, all the way through. There was problems with subcontractors going off the job, people going on strikes and things like that. Obviously, I'm not going to have the, you know, exact inside knowledge of everything that went on, but, you know, there was plenty of people um, talking about it in the local area. But as you can see, this plant, you know, it is a real work of art. And any of you guys, like say, are in the waste industry, you'll be, you know, this will be right up your street. The waste used to go into the plant, I think, pre-shredded or whole, and then they would re-shred it on site remove any stones and bricks or anything before it went through the process and then it would go through. We'll, we'll talk a little bit more about the gasification process and why I think that this plant didn't work later on. But, you know, to, to think that these guys have had, you know, a, a quarter of a billion pound and, and couldn't make out work, wherever the money came from, it's it's quite a sad day. 
a lot of people would have lost their jobs and, and that's not good for our economy and I don't like to see that and let's hope the plant finds some investment in the future and can start running again, that's all we can hope. Right, the first thing I want to tell you is I am no expert in gasification, incineration, reading or writing or any of the other stuff. What I've done, I have used a thing called chat GPT. So what chat GPT is, is this, I use this a lot, right? It's basically a website, which is artificial intelligence. And what you can do is, if you're like me and we're a bit of a caveman, you can type in, like I have done at the top of the screen there, what is gasification? This artificial intelligence will go on the internet. It runs thousands of queries, which basically, you know, asks questions on the internet. Okay, so what is the difference between gasification and incineration? Well, obviously, this has given us a, an answer. And basically, <clears throat> sorry, reading what it says there is, Gasification is, if you like, uh, something like this shape. You heat it from underneath, but the f the heat doesn't necessarily touch the material, so doesn't set it on fire, but it heats it up, and because it heats it up, it splits it into the different elements. Incineration is you've got a big box, and you've got flamethrowers, you know, eating it up, and then the material's burning, and what you hope is, is that you create more heat and steam and electric than you put fuel in. So incineration, you're actually putting fuel directly onto the material. So this plant in Hull, it worked on gasification. And as I've said to you, this thing never worked. I mean, we I can see it from where we are. We're not far away from it. So you could see a bit of smoke coming out a few days, you know, a bit of steam. And then it wouldn't be on for months and you'd see a bit more steam. And then, you know, I used to speak to people in the area who used to deal with the plant, tech stuff in, tech stuff out and stuff like that. And they used to say that when it's running, it can, you know, go through hundreds and hundreds of tons, e even an hour. And produce millions of pounds worth of electric, but it only worked for five days and then it had five months broken down. So the plant, it, you know, it never had a good start. And the reason I say that about a good start is the people who actually built the plant, and again, I've used ChatGBT to, to simplify it, but long story short is it was a year over budget, uh, not a year over budget, it was a year over the um, you know completion date, everything went on, I think it went over budget, so the people who owned the incinerator sued the contractor who was building the plant. This has just been to court. And they won, uh, I think, 150 million quid, somewhere around there, back from the people who designed and made the plant. So the plant basically has been put in on a grant, by the look of it. Like I say, it's not facts. I'm not sure. I don't want to get sued by anybody. But the the plant's been put in. They've had 200, you know, quarter of a billion quid off the government or tax breaks or banks or whatever. They've built this plant. We can do it. We can design it. They've designed it, built it. Went over budget. Can't do it. And um, the company who actually own the plant, so the owner, not the people who've constructed the plant, they've sued them and they've just been awarded, you know, 150 million quid. And what I think is, just my personal opinion is, the court case was about a year ago. It went on over obviously a long time. And I think they've probably had the 150 million because it was finished at court six months ago. I think they've probably been paid the 150 million now. And the thought, you know what, this plant doesn't work. They've maybe had to keep the company open and keep the plant running until they got the 150 million and now it's mothballed. So, you know, that's, that is what I think's happened with this full place. Top and bottom of it. That's just my opinion. I might be wrong, but it's a bit of a coincidence that they've tried for five years or whatever to keep this plant running. It's not worked. And, um, They've been to court, won the case, got 150 million quid or 170 million, whatever it was, for the plant. And now they've gone, you know, basically mothballed it. I don't think they've gone bust. They've just closed the closed the business. So what happens with the plant? Who knows? What happens with the people's jobs? Who knows? People on the inside will know. This is brand, brand new information. I mean, the plant only closed down a week or two ago. Um, obviously, it's all over the internet. So I just thought, you know, I'd give you the information. But let's go back to incineration versus um, gasification. So 
I think the top and bottom of these plants is that people are so crazy about recycling and emissions and everything like that nowadays. They're looking for technologies and reading about gasification. It's not easy to keep stable, so you need a very consistent fuel source. You need, I mean, bear in mind, I've been doing this for 24 hours, so I heard the plant went bust. I thought I'd have a look at it. Somebody else asked me about, oh, has that plant gone shut down near you? So I started looking at it, and in 24 hours, I've realised that you need a very consistent feedstock, which would be biomass like wood, coal, you know, whatever. A very consistent material. So if you're using waste, I would have said that was going to be difficult from the get-go. These guys have obviously put shredders in and different stuff like that to clean it up. And they used to, you know, like say, get all the stones out. Because obviously you don't want the stones sat in the bottom of a incinerator or out like that. So I just don't get it, right? 24 hours, I mean, did somebody just get paid a quarter of a billion quid to make a job and make a load of work for people? And then it was never going to work. Who knows? I don't know. But the reason why incineration works so well against any of this other technology is basically you've got a big box. You've got fire getting fired into the box. And what's inside the box, as long as that burns and creates more energy than the energy you put in. So, for instance, let's say you put a thousand pounds worth of diesel in money. So you put a thousand pounds worth of diesel through these burners. And as long as you make more than a thousand pounds worth of electric off the thousand pounds that goes in from burning that waste, you're always going to make money. And the technology of an incinerator is nothing more than burners and a moving floor. So the waste will come in at one end like this. The floor moves like that and the waste works its way down to the bottom and you usually have some sort of conveyor or screw to take the ash away. That is as simple as it is. You know, that is it. Obviously, you've got a fuel source, so you've got um, your waste going through there. So it's always going to make more electricity. And that's where places like Ferry Bridge and all that, they all work perfectly. But to get these grants, they have to do crazy technology. And I do know two or three incinerators not too far away from here. There's one called Tanston that's closed down. So now we've got Energy Works closed down. They are two massive plants, and they're just in my just in my council, if you know what I mean, just within a small area. You know, all this technology, I don't know if some of it is just to make jobs. Like I say, I, what do I know? I'm just an idiot who, you know, can't read or write real well. I, I'd never be able to do an application to get funding for this sort of stuff, you know, but some educated person somewhere has relieved somebody of a quarter of a billion quid. That is for sure. And the person who's lost his quarter of a billion quid, <clears throat> if he would have gone on the internet for five minutes on YouTube, he could have watched a load of videos and it would have told him that gasification is real difficult. So how does it work? How much damage did building that building do? You know, to, at the end of it, have nothing. It's just, like I say, it's just madness, isn't it? But, you know, I hope this video has given you a good bit of food for thought. And if you guys are into the waste industry like I am, love it. You know, this will give you a good idea of how things work and how stupid people are. Do you know if they had somebody like me and you in the government sat there making the decisions who gets the money? It needs to be a business slash environmental decision, not just like, oh, that doesn't make no emissions. Yeah, but it's never going to work, mate. Yeah, I know, but it makes no emissions or very low emissions or it makes this. It doesn't matter what it makes. If you spend, you know... How many tons of concrete went into it? How many mountain sides have been smashed up to do it? How big was the cable that had to be, you know, half the town dug up to put in? It do not make sense. There has to be a balance between the environmental impact and obviously what makes economic sense. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. As you know, I've had a bad week this week with my way bridge and everything. But we keep pl plodding on, don't we? So, hope you enjoyed the video. I might not get another one on this week. I'm going to try, but... I'll see you all soon, and then people have lost their jobs, I hope you find some, you know, maybe one of you lot on here watches the video, offer, and offer them some work, I will do if anybody comes to us, but see you all soon, bye.